Well, hello, that's me again. Today is August 18th. It is Sunday. It's morning in Seattle. Uh, somewhere it's probably evening. And, um, well, let's start with something which, I mean, you know, the stream of the news and the events is such that, as I already stated, all gone on my good intentions on reading lectures on strategy and, you know, military history and mathematics of this issue, then I have to constantly comment and people expect me commenting on what is going on. Let's start first with uh, what my um, dear friend Larry Johnson uh, wrote about the, this article. Well, actually, let me first uh, show you the article by Washington Post. You know, this uh, tabloid, which I don't know who handles it. Some people say it's FBI outlet, others say it's CIA outlet. I'm lost with all them. So, as you can see yourself, democracy dies in darkness. Exactly. This is exactly what they do. <laughs> they create darkness, and that's where democracy dies, because basically all mainstream media in the United States and in the West are actually nothing more than totalitarian cult, uh, what bunch of the scumbags who write all kinds of garbage. And look at this. Yesterday they say that Ukraine's offensive derails, derails secret efforts for partial ceasefire with Russia officials. Officials say, we know what kind of officials are those. They are totally uh, invented. They are virtual officials. And essentially those scumbags in Washington Post, they write what they are told. So because uh, journalism as such does not exist on the level of the mainstream media and what they say Ukraine and Russia were set to send delegations to Doha this month to negotiate a landmark agreement halting strikes on energy and power infrastructure on both sides diplomats and officials familiar with the discussion said uh, yeah we know those officials as I already stated here uh, Larry basically telling you wh what is this all about which is correct when you dig into the article you know that the Russians and Ukrainians are not talking to each other. Nope, they are talking to Qatari officials. In fact, is even that is wrong, but Larry correctly continues. Who are playing mediator? I have a bold prediction. Those talks will not resume and Russia will not agree to any such deal. I can help by assume that this is another clever, I would argue with that, it's not clever, but Western propaganda campaign designed to portray Russia as desperate for a negotiated end to the war. And he is absolutely correct because this is the only vector, so to speak, on which they can operate. So, uh, uh, Mrs. Zakharova, who is official spokesperson for Russian Foreign Ministry, comes out today. And this is, uh, when she speaks, it's official statement of Foreign Ministry. So, uh, the Foreign Ministry of Russia reacted today to reports of the breakdown of negotiations with Ukraine. Well, guess what? Commenting on the publication in the Washington Post that the Ukrainian attack on the Kursk region disrupted secret negotiations between Russia and Ukraine, Zakharova said that this statement is not not true. No direct or indirect negotiations between Russia and Kyiv regime on the security of civilian critical infrastructure have been and are not being conducted. She was quoted as saying in the departments of the foreign ministry uh, telegram channel. So, well, there you go. That's pretty much all what you need to know. And um, as I already stated, they can do only PR. They really can do only PR. And uh, actually, um, as was predicted, once the first three, four days uh, of high, which is primarily also, you know, basically invented and virtual, of the terrorist incursion of the, those forces in, uh, uh, you know, Kursk area and attacks on the Russian borderlands, uh, kind of war off, uh, suddenly you have to continue to do this high, you know, but the problem is, of course, it's the cognitive dissonance. Uh, for those people immediately, I want to point out that if you want to see some of the results of this uh, incursion, if you wish, uh, you are more than welcome to my blog. You know my blog, it's called Reminiscence of the Future. 
and you can see some of the video and photo uh, basically evidence of how successful quote unquote this incursion was it uh, they took the hostages civilian hostages that's what they do they take you know terrorism basically and they were uh, transporting them into the depths of the Sumer region and this is yeah you have uh, Britain uh, all over written about it over it it's a typical British uh, military uh, type thing so and well, the United States was also trying to kind of, you know, crawl out of the situation, saying, oh, no, we didn't participate in planning. No, you did. Everybody understands that because all hallmarks of the inept operational planning are on the uh, display. And so what happens now, let's talk a little bit, uh, you know, basically, what is going on in terms of this uh, dirty bomb. And I want to... Uh, uh, present to you here a little bit of the no less than the you know u.s government uh, uh representation u.s department of health and human services at C center for disease control and prevention this is the uh, pamphlet the leaflet if you wish which is good, correct i uh, as you can see yourself dirty bomb or radiological dispersal device it's uh what is a dirty bomb and they explain that a dirty bomb is a mix of explosives such as dynamite and radioactive powder or pellets it is also known as the radiological dispersal device rdd and so they correctly state that it cannot create an atomic blast but yes depending on the area they it will contaminate because it's actually radioactive material and it will require evacuation and obviously cleaning of the soil and all other uh, places such as buildings you know uh, and that is why it's well, it is a terrorist act. So Russians uh, run this uh, news about the intentions of the of Ukraine. Well, actually, it's not Ukraine, as I already stated. The West is behind that, and they are doing it out of spite and because they are militarily losers, basically. So they will go to any lengths to, you know, what to cover up what is going on, and we will talk about what is going on. And so uh, uh, Russian uh, foreign ministry and actually defense ministry too, they came out and stated that you know what we will follow the what is uh, prescribed into the international convention for the suppression of acts of nuclear terrorism if you look attentively at this united nations document this convention uh you can easily download it uh in several languages you know language of uh, all kinds of uh, you know primarily people of the um Security Council, which is, of course, uh, you know, uh, the uh, French, uh, Chinese, Russian, English, obviously. Well, and there is obviously Spanish version of it because uh, a lot of people in a uh, huge number, actually, essentially, people in the world speak speak uh, Spanish. So you can read it and you can understand that primarily it's kind of, well, it's sort of vague. It's mostly uh, concentrated on the... Um, explanation of what could be done from the point of view of international laws uh, uh by the way also stressing that this convention in any way supersedes anything uh there and in no way uh, you know describes the reaction which is supposed to be on the part of the country or you know which is affected by this terrorism but that's the funny part of it if you read it this intensively so it's all about whatever the you know national legislature prescribes you to do well in this case as you might understand russians will go with the most harsh variant and although they uh, as now the foreign ministry of ukraine is now denying that it's russian propaganda but we know it was in the place since day one so if anybody tries to do that well the well probably the flattening of the kiev especially center will be in order and yeah you know, it's not going to be uh by the uh, nuclear weapons despite the fact that many people still continue to speak about for some reasons russians using tactical nukes i have no idea uh, i actually i'm not going to name the uh, source but even some respected diplomatic source also continues to use about that you know that putin somehow talks about uh, tactical nukes nobody talks about tactical news uh, nukes in russia but it's obviously everybody refers to russian uh, doctrine military doctrine which explains what is going to happen if for example nato decides to commit suicide but other than that 
there are many ways of Russia basically responding to if that happens. But, you know, what can I say? Nobody knows what, uh, 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 what will happen in this respect because the situation is desperate for these guys, which is now counted, have been counted up to 12,000. Obviously, not all of them are uh, real combat troops. There are some, supply, you know, support troops, you know, the med medicals, you know, the, uh, kitchen and things of this nature. So, and uh, while we're looking at this, why would they, that thing come, come in play. Let me explain. Uh, here is, I already spoke about this. It's called the uh, engineering uh, mining machine called земледелие. Земледелие means literally tolling of the soil. Well, it's agriculture. Okay, that's the name of the funny thing. And as you can see yourself, that funny thing can do what, you know, it's a very effective and it can uh, remotely mine uh, just about anything around it and to the range of 15 kilometers. And the Russians um, in the last few days did exactly that. And if you go to uh, 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 Sume region, now if you can take a look at it, here is the Sume region, and here's the map on the 18th today. As you can see yourself, those uh, dashed lines, you can see yourself how the, they are being liber the territory is being liberated, and of course there are all kinds of uh, creeps from U.S. media and Western media talk about stunning success. Well, it is stunning, but it's not success. It is stunning now. If, as I already stated, if you go to my uh, uh, blog, you will see yourself what is it turning out to be for those troops and the Zimladelia cut off the mind pr practically every single approach to now dispersed force primarily and if you take a look Russians are gathering piles of uh, corpses there they might you know dig in and probably will remain in their dugouts and uh, well for several days after that they will be annihilated and yeah for now most of these uh, troops are trying to hide in those forests and they are dispersed so now that you have the Russian uh, uh, basically troops uh, cleaning up mopping up those things so and as you can see yourself number of the villages and towns have been already liberated and that is why uh, they using uh, they are using all those uh, uh, hammers and attackers if they can on the uh, well primarily bridges trying to blow them up they blew up some of them to about well, trying to uh, how to say it complicate uh, Russian uh, which is now turning out to be the off offensive there and the uh, combat actions are already in the Sumer region and on the Ukrainian territory which soon will become Russian territory so uh, why would this uh, amateurs plan this basically suicidal mission well um, here is the map of Pokrovsk uh, 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 today you see there are uh, um, scale two kilometers. As you can see yourself, uh, Pokrovsk is like this, you know, I don't know how to, you know, it, you see yourself, it's a classic breakthrough, actually, what is happening. And in the last 24 hours, a number of the villages and in towns have been taken. The advances are measured in two, three kilometers. And so, yeah, Taretsk is, uh, yes, as we already know, uh, people are in Taretsk fighting there and uh, of course you know this is a catastrophe essentially what is happening to uh, Ukraine and now here is is uh, Pokrov there was Pokrovsk now Taretsk area you see I mean a lot of things going on there so and this is basically a breakthrough of the front and uh, it's not only breakthrough they collapse they implode and especially now that they killed pretty much or most of their as they think for some reason their greatest troops they are not they already the number of POWs of those uh, sadists basically and terrorists like you know the, those scumbags from Rai Italy television they all were just you know talking to uh, and taking interview uh, with uh, some guys with the you know uh, Lip standard uh, division SS you know uh, Adolf Hitler with the, all those marks yeah there are no Nazis there of course yeah <laughs> so what can I say and if you take a look at their uh, losses, it's for today. And I deliberately, uh, I deliberately uh, highlighted in yellow uh, total for the special military operation, and just from for the last eight months, even less than eight months of 2024. 
And for today it is almost 2,000 killed and wounded, so you have another four tanks. Among them yet another challengers, those great tanks, they burn like they're, you know, what... You, I don't know, it, 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 like the wooden houses, and yeah, they're just not good tanks, I mean, plain and simple. Uh, so, consequently, you might expect that, you know, those British guys and their uh, <laughs> general staff in London, they are suffering an acute case of butthurt, and, you know, being you know, the delusions of grandeur being dissipated, and so armored vehicles 30, artillery and mortar 40, that there are a number of MLRSs, uh, actually M270, you can take a look and go in and take a look how those uh, pack, uh, you know, SAMs, uh, yesterday there were three uh, uh, surface-to-air uh, missile systems destroyed, in, including the uh, IRST, German IRST, and including, of course, the uh, number of the launches of the Patriot. And I already uh, introduced to you uh, the quote from Mr. Semyonov, uh, who is the uh, uh, deputy chief of the uh, uh, Air, uh, air space forces of Russia who said that Patriot is, cannot defend itself, forget about to defending something else. And of course we have MLRS, uh, which are M270, the HIMARS, and attack them. So yeah, just go there, it's all over the place, there's a truckload of video evidence of this. And uh, what can I say, it's it's inevitable and they, as I already stated, the height, uh, high uh, lasted probably three, four days, because they lied as always, they represented the picture completely opposite to what it is and so yeah they have the bunch of losers from cnn wall street journal and all kinds of running around and talking about the stunning something i as i already stated i don't know what are they talking about in terms of stunning but yeah you have to be a complete moron to actually plan this type of operation so now we uh, get to the uh, a little bit uh you know, of European affairs, so to speak. So, as RT reported uh, uh, um, yesterday, actually, but uh, they already actually debunked it. The Germans already came out on record and said, no, it's not true. But here it is. And uh, yesterday, German minister told there is no more money for Ukraine. And it was uh, reported by the Frankfurter, uh, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. And German finance minister Christina Linder has issued a request to the country's defense ministry calling for a limit military assistance to Ukraine. Well, so the uh, FAZ reported on that uh, Saturday. According to Lindner, the uh, uh, country's current budget plan is not capable of allocating funds to Kiev. It took about 24 hours, maybe less than that, that already they uh, came out and said, no, it's not true, well, we have enough money for Ukraine. And what can I say, actually, the Germans as an uh, uh, independent state, they do not exist. Uh, Germany doesn't have state. <coughs> they are occupied territory and essentially colony. And the interesting thing about that, they are actually Pistorius, there's another moron uh, who is the defense minister, and all those, you know, the uh, bunch of the nincompoops who run this country into the ground, Germany is going to be completely destroyed economically. He talks about that, oh yeah, we're going to introduce and, you know, actually transfer to Ukraine <clears throat> 30 leopards, like, you know, 50 murder, whatever, the, you know, uh, armored vehicles and things like that soon. Russians say, sure, transfer it, you will see yourself what's going to happen to them. And so... Um, this is not independent country. They are absolutely uh, incompetent in terms of running their country. And uh, fi uh, finally, Russians, <clears throat> it was actually in some sense, it was necessary that Russians finally got the kick in the butt that as I already stated, and many people already went on record uh, explaining that the Russians don't have any of those brotherly fe feelings towards, uh, you know, Ukrainians. And uh, I'm getting really sick and tired listening constantly to all this uh, totally made up thing that, oh yeah, United States and Anglo-Saxons are good, you know, you're just basically making people, you know, <clears throat> for example, like Slavs fight between themselves. What a load of malarkey. Uh, show me any Slavs who <laughs> allies of Russia. And if anybody uh, wants to understand the reality, listen, read uh, actually essay by none other than Fyodor Dostoevsky, one of the greatest writers of, uh, you know, of modernity. And what he writes about Slavs. Russians do not have 
allies among Slavs. And when people think that the Ukrainians, for some unknown reason, basically being what they are, <coughs> have been, you know, represented, including after the post-World War II, by the Communist Party and, uh, you know, this ideological department, which they wanted understandably, you know, suppress the feelings which many uh, Russians already had then. For example, many people do not understand that so-called Russian Liberation Army, by <coughs> a trait of philosophy, 70% of it were Ukrainians, not Russian soldiers. They were from Ukraine, from Western Ukraine, and those people, as already stated, Ukrainians had their own SS division. So, well, you know what, so, and uh, if you go and watch Elam Klimov's stunning movie, th that was his last movie, after that he said, I'm done with moving, uh, you know, making movies because uh, this is my, you know, basically magnum opus, you can watch it, come and see movie. And this is for the first time in 1985, he actually started to show that these were Ukrainians who committed genocidal acts against the villagers of, in Belarus. And, well, that's what's happening in, uh, in Russia too, Russia proper. And the punitive battalions and those uh, people who are committing the uh, crimes, even in the famous Babi Yar, where the Jews have been executed on the industrial, in the industrial quantities, that those were primarily Ukrainians. These are the same guys who committed the Volinia Riznia for Poles, with Poles, 150,000 of them have been killed, including gang rape of their wives, you know, cutting, uh, you know, uh, uh, open stomachs of the mothers who are pregnant. I mean, you, you don't want to go there. If you want to, certainly just make your own research, you will be stunned by their actually... Uh, I mean, bestial, uh, well, it's terrorism, pure and simple, and the torture and, you know, atrocity they were committing. So, <clears throat> these are the, you know, beloved guys on, in Washington. They, you know, they consider them to be a tool, which they are. And But what, obviously, people in Washington do not understand, if you handle the crap, you know, with your hands, you inevitably begins, uh, become smeared with that. And that's what now they will not be able to wash it off no matter how they try and when talking about how Russians react now to Ukrainians no there is no uh, actually you know sympathy anymore and yeah as I already stated the overwhelming mood now is that Ukraine should be finished off as a state completely so we have this uh, situation and which I didn't know but those uh, calls also are you know increasingly strong and let me show you some numbers which I was surprised myself I knew it was being reduced. I didn't know to what degree it was reduced. And here we have the um, opinion piece uh, by Gleb Prostakov. It's his business analyst. And I defer to people who uh, do the bean counting, which is necessary. It's a necessary job. Uh, and he's talking about uh, two days ago that an attack on the Kursk region could deprive Europe of the remnants of Russian gas. And he's talking about the gas shortages in Austria and Slovakia alone will become a problem for the whole of Europe, as in 2022, the seemingly subsidized Hunger Games will begin again. The struggle for a scarce resource will lead to a further disintegration of United markets and this is correct this is what's going to be happening and then <clears throat> speaking about the gas market he produces absolutely stunning number i knew it was was being reduced but not to such a degree russia losses from the non-supply of gas to europe no no longer look critical its share in the eu market has fallen from once record 40 percent to eight percent five times there is an active reorientation of the supplies to asian middle eastern and other markets but for a number of european countries including austria an abrupt cessation of gas supplies could have catastrophic consequences and he is talking about uh, actually the uh, austria and slovakia gas supplies which by the way ukrainians for now sit on this what is called gas measuring station uh, which as you remember not five miles but actually 500 meters from the border and uh, when people say that, oh, gosh, Russians still supply gas, well, contract is contract, you know, so, you know, what, what can I say? And the uh, contractual obligations, they have to be fulfilled. But, but by 2025, most of those contracts expire. And the only country which probably will be somehow supplied will be, ob apart from Turkey, but obviously it is uh, Hungary and maybe Serbia. But... But the rest of why would Russia care about European Union? 
Russians don't care about European Union. Russians, overwhelming majority of population, hate European Union. And rightly so. They hate Brussels, they hate Paris, they hate Berlin, they hate all those things. If those nations tomorrow run the hunger rights, hunger rights, I mean, so be it. And this is the attitude. And this is what, again, you cannot explain to those so-called strategists in the United States and in Europe. These are morons. They still thing they live in their echo chamber they still uh, that I uh, they are absolutely incredibly attractive which they are not and uh, actually Kursk uh, adventure which is being handled now and it will end up as I already stated uh, parts of the Sumer if not the whole Sumer region becoming uh, Russian uh, well they don't understand how to strategize there are no strategies that's the problem but since we at the strategy and, and on the political level strategy, so to speak, political or state strategy, so here we are. Uh, we have this foreign affairs piece. It was uh, uh, nine days ago, and they talk about this post-American Europe. It's time for Washington to Europeanize NATO and give up responsibility for the continent security. Uh, so, and they talk about that. Well, essentially, yeah, the United States has to get the hell out of Europe and let them deal with this. Well, this is a Trumpian article. Obviously, we have to understand that whatever Trump says about foreign policy is absolutely meaningless. He is a narcissist and hot air balloon. And as much as Kamala Harris is a cackling uh, falcon, can you call it a moron or what have you. Uh, it, it, Trump is not much different. It's all about, you know, getting elected, which is, I understand, yeah, he needs to get elected. And basically pandering to anybody who will uh, listen to his BS, essentially, because the United States is not leaving Europe. What the United States will do, it will leave Europe only insofar as finally finishing off European uh, industries and then shoving down the throat of whatever the inferior and, well, junk United States military industrial complex produces from, again, as I already stated, the United States has very little to offer. Uh, lame duck F-35, uh, Abrams tanks, which burn really well. I mean, what? Attack arms? What else? Oh, Patriot, sure. And as I already stated, uh, 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 reminding you about Mr. Semyonov, what he says, that, uh, yeah, this thing cannot defend itself. Forget about defending uh, anything else. So, and uh, this is what is this all about. There's a lot of whiteboard strategizing, so to speak, but you cannot change the clockwork. It either breaks or it continues to work. And uh, let me tell you, it doesn't work anymore. So it's actually broken, but they will continue, you know, just getting through those gears, you know, and springs, you know, which will be mauled while trying to rotate them, you know, and to operate properly. So they will finally destroy completely the whole mechanism. And you have to stay... Uh, stay with the reality that uh, actually United States, while definitely uh, substituting the liquefied natural gas uh, from Russia in Europe, it doesn't matter anymore for Russia because Russia don't, uh, Russians don't care. And let me tell you, the, evidently their attitude towards Europeans in Russian Security Council is very clear. I mean, they can go and screw themselves and pound sand. And this is uh, these are very bad news for Europeans because the United States will not be able, which is already established fact, to supply all needs of the uh, European industries. And as you might expect, as it's happening <clears throat> in Germany, it's the industry with the increasing rate. I mean, it's just absolutely mind-boggling what is going on there. And so it's going to be true to everybody else in the European Union. And again, uh, you know what, uh, foreign ministry of Russia, they still have to go out and say some, you know, not conciliatory, it's not conciliatory, it's some kind of like, oh yeah, we need to think about Europe like, you know, only like security threat. You know, those people are insane and... Um, how to put it politely, once the Russian gas stops to flow, it's over. And this is what is this all about. The Russians, as I already stated, they will have to hold their noses, use the rubber gloves, you know, talking to the United States, knowing that it's ungovernable and you cannot trust any word from Washington. But you have to, you know, it's just the matter of the what is called correlation on forces and means. And United States doesn't have a proper correlation of forces and means conventionally, but it is still a nuclear superpower and with the not really... Uh, uh, normal, sensible, insane uh, 
you know, leadership. And as that uh, this whole situation with Kursk and Kursian showed, they do not understand war, really. They don't. So, and this is what I wanted to tell you today on this Sunday, and uh, as always, I want to express my profound gratitude towards my wonderful patrons who support my activities. And those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, and those who can afford, please support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee too. And this is it for today, guys, and have the nice rest of your weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.